then what we did with those profiles is we cross-referenced those to our customer satisfaction scores on our website. And what we found is the largest group, those that are connected, those that are more likely to uh, share information with us, as well as uh, seek information, were also the most satisfied. They had a satisfaction score of 81, which is four points higher than the average or of 77. And then below that, you'll see um, we have several different future behaviors, some intents that um, we kind of can kind of measure about what that visitor might do. Um, these visitors have a high likelihood to plan a trip using our website. Uh, they have a very high likelihood of actually visiting Michigan, a uh, fairly high likelihood of participating with us in social media, and uh, high scores in recommending our site to others, as well as returning to our site in the future. Uh, the second group there, the followers at 31%, a little bit lower customer satisfaction score of 76. Um, a lot of the future behaviors were higher, but I think what's interesting is their likelihood to participate with us in social media was rather low. And these are people who said that they're willing to seek information from us. So I think there's an opportunity for us there to maybe improve that relationship with them, maybe do a better job of promoting our Facebook um, page on our website. And then because what we find is the people who are more connected have a higher satisfaction score. So hopefully if we can get those followers to participate with us uh, at a higher rate, we can up that satisfaction score as well. Uh, the passive group at 29%, those are the people who really aren't interested in um, participating with us in social media. Um, they still have kind of high scores for future behaviors as far as travel and such, but again, very low, uh, low future behavior scores for participating with us. But again, maybe what we can do is if we can convince them that um, they can get information from us through our social media space, we can kind of convert those over into followers. And actually, the opinionated group, the small group at 4%, um, they are the least satisfied with our website. But I think there's some value with that group too because this may be a group that we can go to to kind of recruit for our guest bloggers because they like to share information um, with others. And then another uh, survey that we did with uh, 4C results is this kind of looks at the value of our social media uh, visits from, to our website. So it, it, it answers two questions for us. Does social media drive site visits to our website, michigan.org? And more importantly, does social media drive the right visitors to michigan.org? And basically what we found is that our website, um, that Pure Michigan social media presence is driving visitors to the website slightly more than average. But then more importantly, we're driving valuable traffic back to the website from social media because those visitors that come from social media are more likely to recommend our site, more likely to return to our site, and more likely to utilize our site as their primary source for travel information to Michigan. <clears throat> so that was kind of the first piece. Yes, sir. Um, these, were they derived from custom questions, or were they derived, did you get the, uh, the, the ways of, of gleaning that data was it custom questions that you designed, or were they recommended by 4C, or was it a combination of it, They were uh, questions from 4C, actually. And, and as, as a matter of fact, I think if, if you have any questions about the process, I think they'd be happy to chat with you at, at their booth. I'm sorry, I, like I said, it's kind of all behind the curtains. And Thank you. Yes? I think the higher an average is a standard that 4C results had for their other customers. So they kind of had an average score across 4C customers, and that our score was, was slightly higher than that average. Is that, is that correct? OK. OK, moving on. Um, the second piece that we did is we decided to actually go to our social media spaces and actually ask our customers um, 
what their satisfaction was. We chose two spaces. We chose Facebook and we chose Twitter. Um, it was very easy to implement. We just used bit.ly URLs and it, the URLs went to an online uh, very short survey and the results from the survey uh, were fed into our portal, our online portal, so we were able to analyze uh, and slice and dice the information as it came in. Um, a couple of examples. Uh, we want to know what you think of uh, hashtag Pure Michigan on Twitter. Take a short survey and let us know. Thanks. And then a sample Facebook post was, last chance to let us know what you think. Please complete the online survey at the link below. Thanks to everyone for your input. Now, there were a few of us, including myself, that had some concerns about doing this. Um, we were kind of afraid that there might be some backlash of going into the social media space and actually asking them to take a survey. Uh, we, we thought maybe our fans might think it's kind of too br big brotherish, um, And we really didn't want to invade kind of that space. Um, so we were really con kind of concerned, would they even take the survey? So what we did is we changed the language regularly. We uh, posted different times of the day. We would only post um, every other day on, on each space. So one day we'd post on Twitter. The next day we'd post on um, Facebook to kind of alleviate some of those concerns. Uh, some preliminary findings from our reporting. Um, the report period was March 15th through May the 3rd. Uh, Facebook response was great. We had nearly 1,200 respondents from Facebook. Um, Twitter, not so great. Um, just 95 respondents from them. But what we found out on Facebook is that just posting the invitation to take the survey spurred a lot of conversation on the wall. A lot of people liked it, and a, a lot of people were very enthusiastic about sharing their opinions with us. Um, most of the time, it was positive. Uh, I can remember one post where it went negative, um, but it really wasn't about the survey. At the same time that we were running the survey, um, there was some funding uh, for our program. There was, it was funding in the news and the legislature. So there were questions about you know, whether we should be funded or not. So it, like I said, it kind of went negative from there, somebody complaining about our funding. But what we find with Facebook, um, you probably do as well, is um, our fans kind of went in and shouted them down. We don't even need to step in. But um, anyway, there was no negative um, feedback from at least taking the survey. And so what we're able to do is, um, as we see in a little bit, we're able to capture that future intent along with the comments that people were willing to post uh, on Facebook. And what we found is it really created a lot of goodwill. I think most of them were very happy that we were asking them and that we cared about um, their experiences on, on our social media spaces. So some highlights. 92% uh, of the responses came from Facebook, a satisfaction score of 82. Uh, Twitter, about 7%, satisfaction score of 81. So an overall satisfaction score of 82. Remember, our customer satisfaction on our website is 77. So it's five points higher than our website. Um, the Facebook fans are more likely to visit our website, 84 compared to 78. But the others are fairly high. Both of them are very likely to actually visit Michigan, uh, as well as recommend um, our Facebook or our social media space to others and return to our social media space. Uh, Twitter respondents are highly engaged with other social media. 89% of them also use Facebook, 76% use YouTube, while only about a half, uh, half of our uh, Facebook respondents use YouTube. Looking a little closer at Facebook, again, satisfaction score of 82. Um, the Facebook respondents have a very high likelihood of visiting Michigan. Uh, I think that is the 95 score over there. On our website for michigan.org, that score is 92. So again, on Facebook and our social media space, they are more likely to visit, actually visit Michigan than our web visitors. Uh, how often they're engaging with us on Facebook? 58% uh, uh, visit three or more times per day, 35% uh, once or twice a day, 
So about 93% of uh, our respondents are visiting Facebook every day. As a matter of fact, what's kind of interesting when we look at um, the interaction with us on Facebook throughout the day, we see this huge spike, eight to nine, and then it kind of levels off, and then 12 to one, and then like at four o'clock in the afternoon again. So um, it's like people are getting to work, they're checking their Facebook, and they go to work, and then uh, they check their Facebook on, on lunch hour and right before they go home. But uh, some other results. Um, how were people finding out about us, uh, our Facebook page? Most of them were finding out about us through our website or through word of mouth. The more frequently they visit Michigan.org, the more satisfied they are with Facebook. So only 5% said they never visited Michigan.org. Uh, Out-of-state respondents also have a high likelihood of traveling to Michigan in the next six months. 90% of our Facebook fans took a trip within Michigan in the last year. Um, and 43% of them uh, traveled seven or more times in the last year. Facebook respondents also have a high likelihood of visiting our website, and 71%, 71% said that Facebook made them aware of places and activities in Michigan that they didn't know existed. 26% were more likely to travel to Michigan after reading the posts, and only about 10% said the posts had no influence on them at all. So kind of what's next for us, um, I think for Pure Michigan, we want to extend um, the survey. And I think what we've done so far is, uh, you know, we understand who our social media audience is, and we kind of have a good idea of what their future intents are. But I think it'd be great to maybe do a follow-up survey where we actually can find out, did they actually travel to Michigan? And if they did, what kind of influence did social media have on that trip? Did they actually do something that they wouldn't have done otherwise? Did they maybe extend their stay? And maybe even, you know, was the trip what they expected? Um, did we kind of oversell it or, you know, whatnot? We can, usually, we can certainly use this to um, establish a baseline. And then as we move forward, as we make changes to our social media spaces, does our customer satisfaction level increase or decrease? Or even if we do nothing, does our customer satisfaction level go up or not? Because maybe then we're kind of falling behind some trends that are going on that, that we're not aware of. And uh, finally, on the economic development side, we are just now starting to implement some uh, social media programs there. So I think um, we do the similar type of measure there. That's all I have. Um, are there any questions? <laughs>